Are we on? Are we here? I think so. I think we're active. So, live is so much different than doing regular videos, but I like them. I like them because that way, towards the end, if I don't answer any questions right up from the get-go, what I might do is I might uh, do it at the end. I might kind of go over this question that I had from a lad. Julian actually <clears throat> sent me an email, which I really appreciate. You can always send me an email. I typically put them in the description after the video is posted because I'm not smart enough to know how to do it during and I don't have a moderator and I'm not a millionaire. So, sorry. <laughs> so, he's got a question here. Hey, came across your videos a few months ago. Really interested in doing garage doors. I was intending on learning the trade and starting my business to get out of the rat race. Interesting. So I can accumulate money for other investments. I like that. I like that for other investments. That's what you got to be thinking about. You got to take the money. You got to put it into something else. Not that you can't invest in yourself. Not that you can invest in more in the business. But you need to be investing in other things. I was curious how I, sh uh, how I should start a garage door business. So <clears throat> with that being said, my fellow followers... My fellow friends, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any uh, comments, put them below. I mean, let's 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 help this person out, shall we? Let's help this person out. I mean, that's what it's all about. Because you know how it is. I can be successful, but it's no fun doing it alone. So, should I get parts, or do I need to wait till I get customers and then get my material? I was seeing how much of an investment I need to prepare myself for. Do I have? Uh, do you have any advice or guidance for me? Oh, why? Well, yes, I do. So, uh, one of those rabbit holes that can go pretty deep. I'm still a big. Your big thing. See, like, I think I even did this a little bit when I first started out. I remember I was gonna I was gonna merge with another another guy. Another other um there was like two more guys i was going to merge with and we sat down we had a meeting and the one guy was like a realtor right so he had commercial property and he's like i got this property i'm buying you guys can have your business here and i mean everything sounded so great it was like wow yeah you know we're gonna have a location but the problem was at the time this was many many years ago we're talking ten thousand dollars and i'm like so we're gonna go like ten thousand dollars in debt on a building and we don't even have any customers, you know, like we have no, we don't have the phone ringing. He's like, oh yeah, but it's going to be, you know, and it's like, so there's a lot of things that go into play here. Really, it always comes down to the person. It comes down to you because if you're, if you're looking, you know, like, honestly, this is how I kind of look at it. I'm assuming you're kind of a one man band. You're starting out, you're younger. <clears throat> Honestly, if it was me, I would I would literally start out like on weekends or after uh, after hours for your you know after your, your normal work because then you're gonna get into it and you're gonna see if you like it or not because you might get into this and go oh my gosh this is way too much headache way too much paperwork and the thing is is like everybody's got it so easy nowadays because. Of, of, of this, of this, this device right here, Facebook marketplace, Craigslist was just pretty much obsolete yard sale next door, all these different options to get customers for free for free. When I started out, you know how many meetings I had with phone book advertising? I mean, I can, I literally, what? And I remember they sit you down and they promise you the world. It was just, oh my gosh, you know. And that's the reason now, looking back, I would have done it differently. I started out with A because I got you in the top of the phone book, right? So that's why I did affordable because it got me in the top of the phone book on the top of the list. But, you know, the biggest thing I remember when I first started out struggling wise is yes, money can be an issue, <clears throat> but you can you can eliminate that by having the customer so like right now i got Lowe's behind me 
you can literally have a customer and, and you can figure these things out where typically whatever they're going to sell you is going to be the cheapest product. So go in there and say, hey, look, I want to add an extra strut to the garage door or, hey, I want to upgrade the springs instead of you don't want extension springs. I think they still sell extension springs. I don't know how it is, but you don't want extension springs. You want torsion springs. You know, maybe you want to upgrade the hardware of some sort. See, in the garage door industry, what I've always noticed for myself is typically, I think one time, was it Safeway? I think Safeway came out with a flush door and it was not insulated. And I was like, oh my gosh, finally a flush door that's just got the grain, you know, the wood grain on it. And I remember it was, it had a, what do they call it? The tin can or canning effect, I think is what it's called. And it was so wavy. I was like, oh, there ain't no way. And the customer called us out and they're like, ah, this door looks like crap. And I'm like, yes, it absolutely does. I apologize. And so we had to go with a different style. We had to go with raised panel or ranch. I can't remember what we did. But um, for the most part, the panels are always not a problem. I mean, there is slight differences, right? It's always the hardware though. The hardware is where things, they cheap out. I don't like things, things happen. So what I'm saying is, you could always have the customer purchase the door, right? If you just want to do installs, you could, you know, your biggest thing is you got to figure out what you need for garage door springs in your area. And that's kind of costly, but if you're lucky enough and you can hook up, see, there's, there's options to everything. There's, there's no obstacle. And <clears throat> so if you can find a garage door company to work with, for us, we've been very lucky around here. We have a place that's about 45 minutes away that when we started out, they were your savior, man. You go to them, they got um, everything, garage doors. And I mean, the thing was, they already went through the stuff, right? So they want to sell you a quality product, which was really nice. It was really great. So you, there's just so many different ways. Now you got to get some hand tools. You got to get some power tools and they can be used. Uh, my nephew, you know, he bought some from me, some of the old used, uh, DeWalt stuff I had, and they still work. They do the job. That's all you need. I mean, <laughs> I mean, guys, these people used to put this stuff back in with like the turn handle and square nuts. I mean, that's how old I've seen the stuff. You know what I mean? So you, I mean, power tools have just evolved. They're great. Um, there's just so many more options. So <clears throat> I wouldn't be afraid. I would just be more afraid of, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to just jump out of it and then jump into another business, you know, and jump into my garage door business without having a customer base. That would be my biggest, like, don't do that. You know what I mean? Because now you're going to have so much pressure on you where learn it little by little. You know, I think of it, that's why I like, I like running an ax, right? Besides uh, sometimes a physical labor, but I love swinging an ax, right? And you're, you're chopping at a tree, right? You're chopping at a tree or a log or you're splitting a log, whatever it is, right? But it's little by little. And then finally the tree falls. And that's what you're doing, you know? And finally it will fall and you're like, oh, oh, oh that was sweet. Great, it's on the ground. And then you're kind of like, oh, crap. Now I got a mess to clean up. Now I got this I got to do. I also have more work to do. And that's kind of how business is. So you're just taking little chips. But investment, gosh, I don't know. I don't know what you absolutely need for money-wise on this stuff nowadays. I mean, it kind of just depends. You can do it little by little. And you know, and a lot of times honesty will get you a long ways. You know, I've had so many problems <clears throat> when I look back in the business. And that's one thing that really is crummy. Um, you know, I went to McDonald's today, right? I stopped in there from one of the kids, the lady up front, she's a super nice lady. She's, you know, and I said, hey, I said, I see it says, you know, no refills. And she goes, oh, I don't know. She goes, I don't work normally up here. I work in the back or the drive through And I said, oh, I said, you know, so of course I got to ask. I said, I said, short staffed. And she goes, uh, she goes, well, two people, uh, well, she caught herself. She goes, they didn't call in. They just didn't show. And I'm like, that's the new norm. We've had people in the business that just ghost. They don't call. They don't give you no heads up. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So I don't, I don't envy that part of the business for the future generation because it's 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 super tough it's just it ain't getting better that is just my opinion comment below comment below if you've been doing this you're a seasoned vet you think it's getting better i don't think it's getting better i think it's getting a hell of a lot worse <laughs> that's just me so but anyways if you guys have any questions i don't know hopefully the audio is good because i didn't put on the old pella mic today and uh so i'm kind of trying to talk a little bit loud for you but if you guys got any questions about business or whatever go ahead feel free obviously 
people normally tune out around the eight to 15 because they just, their attention span is not that long. But I like to stay on here a little bit, especially on a Sunday. It's gloom and doom today. I'm watching crossed over there. I think there's a homeless person in a van, I think. I see garbage out there, but anywho. So, but yeah, starting out, you know, <clears throat> you know, my biggest thing I, I remember uh, going into it a little bit is what I struggled with. This was just, this was just me. <clears throat> I remember the vehicle was a real pain in the hiney because I tried every different scenario. I was always trying to find a different way. I, I, had, I've, I think I started out, you know, kind of with my personal truck. And your personal vehicle really stinks to use, I think, right? Now, there is a benefit. A benefit is it's one vehicle. It's one payment. You can maybe stick with something newer, but you got to be on top of it all the time. I mean, you got to be, you got to keep it clean. You got to keep it washed. You got to keep your like personal stuff kind of out of it compared to your, you know, business stuff. So it was really difficult. And then what I would find out would happen is I remember I would take the stuff. I'd have to use the truck. Right, I had a truck. I think I had a, gosh, I had like a 2001 Dodge Ram diesel or something, extended cab, long box. I think it was a long box. No, nah, it might have been a short box. Anyways, I put the tools in it. And I remember I would, I'd put all the tools in there, blah, 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 blah. And I even tried to make like, I made this makeshift like wood because I was like, I'm not buying this 12 or $2,000 uh, slide out for it. So I remember I, I built one. I spent a lot of time on it. I spent a lot of weekend, uh, well, probably a weekend building it. It'd slide out. Well, I'd have to take that whole mechanism out if I needed more room. And I'd set the tools down in a particular spot, right, in the garage, in my garage. I had a couple of separate garages. So I'd set it down. So I was like, okay, you know, all this stuff is like right here. Nobody touch it. Nobody touch it. Well, the weekend would come or the weekday or you'd be working on something. It's like, oh, I need that screwdriver. Yeah, let me go get that screwdriver. Yeah, I get that screwdriver. Don't forget to put that screwdriver back. Well, then you, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you see, I need a charge. Oh, God, that one's got the, the, one's got the, the metal blade in it. I'll, I'll go get that. So I go get the metal blade, right? And then what happened? You forget to put the crap back. And then Monday roll around, right? You get that service call. Something popped up over the weekend, whatever it is. Oh, I need you to come fix my garage door. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. You know, you're just getting done with the camping trip, whatever. You throw the stuff back in there, right? You're like, yeah. You go to the customers and you're like, oh my gosh, the track is buried in concrete, right? And you're like, oh my gosh, I got to cut. I don't, oh, I left the sawzall. That was my biggest thing. So <clears throat> when we switched over to having, or I had at the time, a work vehicle, which my first work vehicle, I wish I was trying to find pictures for you guys today on my old phone, but it's not, it's like it went kapoof, got ghost in it. But it was an old Ford, no, sorry, it was an old Dodge. That was the first work van I got. I paid like 600 bucks for it. It was an old Dodge, um, I don't know if they have a certain name, but it's just their van. It's like a 250 service van. And I bought it from an auto place, an auto repair place, I remember, that sold auto parts. I thought it was kind of weird that they didn't like fix it, right? Had a little bit of miles on it and 318, I believe. And I remember it didn't, um, it didn't run right. They said it's, it's not like accelerating. We don't know why. All right. You know, how much, how much? And I sat out there for a long time. I think they wanted 1200. I got them down to 600 bucks. I remember I went down to my buddies. I took a torch and I cut out the Cadillac, uh, converter in it. I was like, I just don't think it's breathing. You know, we knocked that thing out, man. He lives on a little back road, you know, kind of a whatever hillbilly area. And man, that thing also lit right up. I mean, just all the power. I'm flooring it down the road, you know, smoke, black smoke's just puffing out of this thing. It was a great time. And so I got it fixed. I welded that piece back up. I think I left the cat part out. I can't remember if I replaced it or not. I worked on it. I put way too much money into it. You know, the body needed work. So I took it into a body shop. I think we spent, gosh, I don't know at the time. It was like 4000 It was too much money, way too much money. And so... Got it all fixed up. The bins, oh my gosh. I'm telling you right now, that's, this is this is life advice right here. If you guys get the chance to buy a service vehicle with the bins, like I'm saying like those gray, oh, I forget what they're called, Aramo, Aramo, whatever, the bins in them. Anything you want, whatever you want. Whatever, if, if it's got like even like a ladder rack, it helps a lot. Those things are like, gold because when they're used they're like worth nothing they're worth peanuts i mean you can like you almost have to like give them away 
right? I, I mean, I you spend so much money on them when you buy them brand new and then you got to get them installed. And then it's kind of like, that's really not your department, right? You're like, they got certain brackets and certain ways they hook up to the ceilings so they don't flip over. And I spent way too much money, just way too much money. So, <laughs> so, okay. So Josh got here. Let's see what we got. How do you get most of your customers? I'm starting a company. Well, there's many different ways. Um, so it depends on what you're, what you're doing. I'm assuming obviously garage doors. So with the garage doors, what you got to remember is I always think of it as like a fire or, or, or a fire extinguisher, right? A fire extinguisher is not important. Nobody cares about a fire extinguisher until there's a fire, right? Oh my God, there's a fire. Where's the fire extinguisher? Where's the garden hose? That's how we work in the garage door business. So my opinion is we are not, we are not like Kmart. We are not Sears. We are not Walmart. We are not a luxury like you advertise like, hey, we got pants on sale or we got t-shirts on sale this week. We are, oh my gosh, my garage door won't open. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I got to take the kids to school. I got a doctor's appointment. I got to cut the grass today and my lawnmower's trapped. Back in the day, it was the phone book. The phone book was your go-to place, right? Now... I would say it's definitely mostly Google. I listened to a guy the other day and I totally have to agree with him when he said, nobody says, hey, just Yahoo it, or hey, just Yelp it, right? It's a known, everybody says nowadays, Google it. I mean, I do the same thing, right? Somebody, I think the wife had to clear something on her car code, you know, for changing the oil type thing. And I was like, yeah, you're gonna have to like Google it. Or I said, you know, go on YouTube, YouTube it right? It's either Google or YouTube. So what you need to be doing is making sure that every customer you interact with, try your hardest to get them to give you a review, um, no matter what you got to do. Sometimes you got to tip the customer. Sometimes you got to buy gift cards. Sometimes you just got to ask pretty, pretty please. And sometimes you can walk around with a tablet if you want to. Didn't really work for us. But you could always, <clears throat> there's just different ways you can do it, but you got to get, I really think you got to get in Google, um, especially when you're starting out. I still, you know, a lot of guys kind of gave me the, the flack about the yard signs. I still think the yard signs are great, right? Because they grab your attention because it's like when you go down certain, especially like blocks or subdivisions, right? That's your area, man. That's your turf, man. That's your ground. That's where you, like you, you know, you like your dog, you mark it. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, so you're driving down the road and you're like, what the, what's that sign? Huh? Oh, Betty, she go, what she got? She got a yard sale going? What's, oh, hell, oh, she got, oh, damn, look, garage door, man, makes my, mine looks like crap. Who did, who did it? I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to Facebook her. I'm going to Facebook messenger, whatever it is, whatever they do, you know, text, whatever. How'd, how'd they do? What'd they charge you? How much was it? So I still like the, I still like the yard signs. I mean, Lowe's always pushed it. And <clears throat> like I said, you're there. I had a lot of customers always walk over. Hey, you know, you got a bit business cards. You know, you got to always have the business cards, right? Stickers. Stickers are for the future. Stickers are for repeat too, right? The customer, they don't know, right? They throw that stuff away. They lose it. I always still liked, I never got into it. Uh, Service Spring would give you um, cans. You had to buy a certain quantity, which kind of stunk, but you could get your name put on it. And I always thought that's great because I had a guy that was selling lube, uh, just like a, Gen general guy walks into the shop one day and he's like, Hey, we sell lube. And at the time I was like, man, eh, whatever, you know, we buy ours from service spring. And I remember, you know, COVID hit and, or I don't know if I can say that. Anyways, the cough syndrome hit. And it was like, you know, I was like, Oh my gosh. I was like, I might have to buy spray lube from this guy. And I remember, look, I had his can. I didn't throw that can away. Oh heck no. I had precious spray lube in it of whatever penetrating oil, whatever kind of gave me. And it had a sticker on it and it had his name, had his phone number, had his email. I ain't throwing that can away. Uh-uh. No, that's, that's $10 right there. I'm not. So things that can stick around like that can really help out sometimes, you know, with customers. So, oh no, what do we, what do we got here? What do you got here? What do you think would be a good idea to do some door knocking? 
Mm. So door knocking, let's see here. Sometimes, you know, <clears throat> the one thing we always gotta remember is that we only have so much time in the day. So, I, <clears throat> I wouldn't think, I should show you because I, I don't have it with me. Another business I have, I got um, a pole, pole stapler, and I can put up signs. And so if you put up signs at like intersections on wood poles, it might be, you know, you're, you're getting people, you know, even if you put the ones that have the stakes, but sometimes the, you know, DPWs and that, they don't like that, or they, they hit them with their lawnmowers and stuff like that. But I'm not saying door not, I mean, it's like, it's just, it's on a different level, right? If you got more time than you got money, then heck yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Walk around. I would be one instead of wasting my time because like, if you come to my door, <laughs> I'm not probably going to answer. I just, I just don't want it. It's like, we live in such a weird paradigm now. You know, I always think about like, you know, think about how your neighbor used to come over, right? And the, the wife would get all dressed up for the day and you know, they'd have their little tea and we're, we're kind of like not in that, right? We're kind of like slobs, right? We're in our pajamas, we're at home, we're watching TV, we're on our phones. It's like, who's that? I mean, we don't even like go out hardly anymore, right? And we don't, you know, everything changes so fast. We don't even have the same UPS driver all the time anymore. You know, we're used to knowing by name. We normally don't even have the same male people anymore. You know, we don't have the, the newspaper guy. That's the same guy that's been doing it for 20 years. Like, oh, hey, George, how you doing today? Oh, yeah, how's the kids? You know, it's like, I mean, do you go out and say hi to the Amazon person all the time? I don't. It's a different person. And normally, nothing against them, but they're just a little different sometimes. So I just, I don't know. I, I would think like a door hanger might work better. Or sometimes people always forget you can actually do like Anderson and stuff like that. They do their things in the mail for like windows and stuff like that. You could do that. But I still like the signs. You know, the signs are, you know, they're about 12, 15, maybe 20 bucks. Uh, you got a little bit of staples. Get yourself a stapler, you know, start banging some of those up around. I mean, people will gobble it up. Now, you got to remember right now we're going, I, I really, this is my opinion. I think we're going into bad times. I think we're going to be doing the 08 again here pretty soon. So it's it's going to be kind of, you know, hold on to your britches. So, but yeah, you can, you can do anything. Let's see here. Uh, so the split and cracking doors. <sighs> garage doors, garage doors, garage doors. So what you got to remember <clears throat> is not always. Not always, but so I did the same thing. This is, it's just kind of funny to me. So with garage doors, you got to remember like, you know, more than likely, just more than likely, if you look, especially like the surrounding the house, right? If their garage door is in that bad of shape, more than likely they don't take enough pride already to take care of the garage door and fix it. <clears throat> That's just kind of my opinion. I, I've I've literally done it for, ugh, I don't know, two or three years when I was starting, right? You know, I'd be driving around. And go, oh, hey, 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 they need a garage door. Let's go. Let's just stop. Let's stop in there. Stop in there. I give them a, you know, and it's like you kind of give them brochure. You give them the, you know, and they kind of, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, how much, you know? And you're like, well, this, okay, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Maybe I'll give you a call. You know, and you're and it's not that there's, I mean, you got to swing, right? I mean, you got to swing to play ball. I mean, if you don't swing, you'll never hit a ball. But unless you can come in with a really cheap price, which I'm sure you can, especially if you're just starting out, it's it's hard because like when the 06, 08 stuff in that range, when the economy tanked out, <clears throat> I've realized that people, you know, people will fix the roof before they give a rat's butt about a garage door they'll park that car outside well i don't care about parking that car outside that car's got a payment out the bank's gonna come take it in two two months or uh, six months or whatever it is they don't care right <clears throat> so the garage door like we went through like it was almost like five years it seemed like it was five years that <clears throat> when we finally started going back to these garage doors <clears throat> it was like you'd see them right and you're like holy crap like this thing needed to be replaced like eight ten years ago 
You know what I mean? And now you're kind of like, well, yeah, you know, well, you know, they, I mean, they don't want to come out and they're embarrassed, you know, whatever. People don't tell you the, the truth, right? And they, you know, well, you're here now, you know, because they got a little bit of money, the economy, like, you know, residential is the quickest, the quickest to, to flip on you. It, it, it's, it's as bad as the stock market, right? You guys get these like Yahoo things. I get these Yahoo things all the time. You know, you know, stock market's doing great today. And it's like, oh, Target had a bad earnings, you know, stock market crashed, you know, and it's like, oh, just because of Target, you know, because of whatever, Bud Light, whatever all that stuff's going on. You know what I mean? It's like, whoa, like that's all it takes. And it's so, it's so emotion based, you know, people in 401ks and all that kind of stuff. So it's just the garage dirt business is really tough sometimes. It's, I'm not saying it's not a bad business. It can make good money if you play it right, but you got to be, got to control that mind. You got to be, got to be think methodically. So, uh, let's see worth oh, Facebook business just made. Okay. Facebook. Yep. So I am starting to dabble into the Facebook, uh, a little bit and I know. So I heard from a guy, you know, what was it? He calls it like, you know, with Facebook, it's a, it's, it's a disrupting ad, right? And you think about it, right? You're scrolling, scrolling, you're, you're doing your own thing, right? And all of a sudden, boom, here comes up an ad. You're like, oh, you know, what's this? So Facebook is a little bit different animal. Not that it's bad because I think you're doing that branding behind the scenes. So all of a sudden that one day when something comes up, all of a sudden you go, oh yeah, yeah. You know, like, Oh yeah, I, you know, I, I, I think I knew where, I, see the thing is with Facebook, like even for me, it's hard to find, like, where do you find, where do you find it again? You got to do the search. So there's kind of like that meat and potatoes, right? You see the certain things and they, and they know the algorithm, what you're looking at, but you got to remember it's kind of, um, there's nothing like the power of Google, right? And typing in there. And they, and you guys might not know this, but they work hand and fist, right? It's, it's, it's big brother and, and little brother. So you got to be nice to little brother. So big brother. So you, you got to kind of work those guys and, um, in tandem, I guess. So yeah, you know, it can be done, but yeah, Facebook, I mean, like I said, it ain't gonna hurt. Um, you can always do, you know, but man, I tell you what, you guys ever notice like with Facebook? It's like a weird, different animal out there, man. We got a lot of weird people. I don't know if they're, they're bots, what they are, but it's just the, the clientele is sometimes, and it's hard because it's like by the time you're almost like bitter and you're like, yeah, it's, it's available or whatever, you're another flake. It's like, oh, well, I'm interested. And then all of a sudden they sound like a human again. You're like, oh, oh, geez, I'm sorry. Yes, um, how you doing? Let's handle this for you. Oh, what do you got? Stickers at the bottom bottom they'd put on the door <clears throat> yeah i don't know if josh you're talking about like the hangers like i see you're saying the stickers i don't know if you got like in your place if some people are putting like stickers on the outside of the exterior door or obviously you always do it on the inside it's always a gamble to me i always just kind of do it where it's like always visible on the garage door so you know like my competition they sometimes they put it up on the wall by the button like so it's like right there you know like but for my experience, it just, they never stick. They don't stick to the drywall. You know, then when it is a nice flat wall, it's typically clean and perfect. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to put a sticker on somebody's nice wall there. So I always felt more obligated where I'm like, at least if they came out and screamed at me, I could be like, oh, I'm sorry. And I could peel it off the door. But for the most part, they never cared. Sometimes I put them up by the door. You know, I put them under the openers, you know, so when you're standing there, cause like the door's filthy and it's like, it ain't ever going to stick to the door. I know I always put them to walkways, you know, wherever you walk, like the because you know how that is, the door breaks, right? And people are going to walk out the service door if there's a service door there. And they're going to be like, you know, well, I don't know. Oh, hey, well, right here. Here's the sticker. Who installed it? Give them a call. And <clears throat> there's a lot of ways in garage doors that you can kind of like, you can um, jack stuff up in a sense. So like when I started out, um, I, I ended up regretting it. But you could actually do, um, you can do same day service. And the, it was kind of funny the way I learned it. The way I learned it was, um, yeah, yeah, it shows you how obsessed I am with garage doors. <clears throat> so when I used to travel outside of my normal area, you know, Chicago, wherever, you know, Tennessee, all these places, right? First thing I always did when I got in the, in the hotel is I'd open up the phone book, 
right? I, I get that phone book open. Look at the garage doors, right? We're almost next to the garbage. You know, it's not us. Nope, we're, we're garage door. <laughs> and uh, I would look at how they did their ads. And I remember the one, I think it was that Precision one, it was, but they weren't over in my area. They were only in um, the Chicago. And I remember seeing that same day service. And I went, huh, wow, well, you know? But the problem was, is that eventually what you always, you know, and that's the hard part is you, you need to look towards the future. Is that all of a sudden that same day service turned into kind of like, so we had same day service. The one I, I, and like I said, another one that can bump you a little bit is 24 hour service. But the problem was like on the stickers and that, that stuff started floating around town. We got into commercial buildings and stuff like that. And then it would start backfiring because <clears throat> not hardcore, but it's just one of those things that you're not holding up to your obligation, right? So same day service is a tricky one. So people would like to be like, well, it says on the sticker, same day service. And it's like, yeah. And unfortunately it's three o'clock on a Friday right now. And we're like, we're booked out right now. Well, I just, you know, so what it almost needs to turn into is same day service needs to turn into extra, like, convenience store, right? Like we all know if you go in to get milk at the convenience store, it costs more than going into the store that's next, you know, the big building or at the gas station. So it turned into, yeah, we do provide same day service, but it's an extra charge or it, it almost like you'd be kind of classifying it as emergency service. So it's always a real gray area. It just, it got to be like, it kind of got to be a burden on the secretary and it, it just, so we started kind of backing off that and then we we kind of jumped right off the ship for the whole 24-hour service because 24-hour service, we were getting commercial and there was a certain ones and the problem was you were getting the employees, right? You weren't getting the owner or you weren't getting the maintenance guy that's in control. You get like, you get an employee that would call you and it's like, hey, uh, yeah, it's three o'clock in the morning right now. And um, yeah, we just hit it with a forklift. So yeah, we need somebody out here right now. Well, the problem is, is that, well, who's paying the bill? And that's the one thing I do, I still don't like about the garage door industry is because you you get that call, right? You, and you get that, you know, the, the heart starts pumping. You're like, oh my gosh, I got to go out here and get this fixed, right? You do all this work. And then it's almost like the maintenance guy or whatever is like, uh, that stuff, that wasn't approved. I didn't tell you you know, I mean, I'll get this taken care of, but don't let this happen again. And so it just, it got to be just too much where it was like, you know what? We just can't, it was too much headache. It wasn't, it wasn't in our, at least our area. You know what I mean? Like maybe like Chicago and stuff like that, or somewhere big, big, you know, metropolitan, you know, a lot of gates, a lot of, I mean, and you got a crew of guys that like to work. Sure. But we started kind of mellowing out, you know, we kind of got up in age. We kind of thought, you know, we got families now. That's a lot of things guys don't think about when they're young, right? When you're young, you're just like, I'm free. I can do all this stuff. Well, you start getting a family, you start getting kids. You're already up half the night with a baby screaming. Things start adding up. So let's see here. Mean doors, hangers, but yeah. What's up, man? How are you doing? How's everybody doing? Everybody doing good? Oh man, I'm, I, I'm doing pretty good. I'm, I'm, yeah, the, yeah, the inside got Josh. Yeah, I mean, no, I'm, I'm doing great. I've been, man, I tell you what, I broke through the ice a little bit. You know what I mean? Like I said, I got, I got very lucky. I got, a, I got, you know, such good, uh, <laughs> man, I can't, I got such good employees. I tell you what, I love them. I do anything for them. And I tell you what, it's so hard in this business, any business, a lot of businesses to find good you know, honest, loyal, trustworthy. I mean, the trustworthy is a big, I mean, I've had so many people in this business that lie and steal. And I mean, they just, it's just, you know, it's like a man's words. Not, it's not, it's not here anymore. You know what I mean? It's like, and the thing is, is most of the time when they're a liar and stuff like that, they're always that way. And it's just, it's just sad, you know? And but the people, I mean, but the, you know, it's what, what have I said? I'm at like 16 or 18 years. Oh, six, do the math. You know, you think about it. It took a long time. I mean, <laughs> to get with these, these, 
you know, wonderful people now to, to filter them out. And I had just so many riffraff. And to be honest, not all the time. But, you know, if I look back at it, you know, I kind of had some guys running stuff for me. And, you know, I think, honestly, if I had to do it again, um, it's hard because when you're young, people don't respect you. It's just, it's just like an absolutely given. They do not respect you. They don't look up to you. It's hard to, it's hard to hire people. Um, but I would definitely, I would, I would probably entertain drug screening. I really would because a lot of them did certain things. Um, some a little harder, some a little softer, some just being like, Hey, getting sloshy at night, you know, drinking alcohol. And I'm telling you that stuff can just, it's a, it's a time killer. Um, don't waste your time with it. Don't waste your time on it. it it's just nothing but wasting your time. Uh, let's see. Oh, in Chicago, several months ago, after being sales rep for several years of bigger companies. Nice. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> How much harder? Oh, man. Yeah. Lose your mind here to sell. Oh, whew. man. I tell you, it's a tough business. You know, a lot of people... In the business, you know, it, it, it's so easy when you work for somebody. Um, I did it. You know what I mean? Where you work for somebody and you're just like, oh, my God. I mean, you're looking at the invoices, right? You know, they're making this. I just watched this guy. I don't know if you guys know this guy or not. It's like, was it graduate door school or something? Like training school? It's what he advertises. And obviously, he must be selling a program. And because he's like, you can get certified. I'll, I'll certify you, blah, blah, blah. But he was showing like 11 like 1150 I think, you know, $1,150 for changing out two springs. And I'm like, man, I thought precision was bad. You know what I mean? Like they would go in there and charge like $600. And I'm thinking like, this dude just charged like for 20, 30 minutes. And I'm like, I'm not saying it's not possible because everybody's different, right? You're in California. I'm sure your prices are extremely high. Of course, it was after I'm thinking, man, I feel like the guy kind of took advantage. And I thought, or he's not being truthful about the real and he's trying to hype up his school like you you can make all this money and i thought yeah i don't know like you know our area what maybe three four six hundred on a really healthy day you know maybe 800 if you really want to chisel miss jones and i just thought dang man i thought how do you make that kind of money i just thought that's just nuts for a broken spring i just don't think i could live knowing that springs are what you know 60 bucks a piece and you know you got your time and stuff but i'm like I don't know. That just seems like you're asking for a phone call for somebody like the husband to come home and go, um, yeah, I just called three other companies and they said they would do it for half the price or even less. I don't know. That's just me. Ah, oh, man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I see on here the pro lift. We got a pro lift that runs around here. I think he was just in a parade. Uh, my dad took a picture. Uh, he's getting out in the field and sells jobs at cost. He doesn't make money. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. It's, it's those guys. It's, oh man, it's, it's tough. It's tough in the business. You know, if you're not making no money, um, because you, you're always, you know, I think this guy was trying to tell me something one time and he was, he was a big, uh, he was a maintenance guy, right? He's a big one of a big company I was working for. And I was, I was so like, blessed and like punished at the same time to be with this guy. And, you know, I remember him always telling me one time, he says, you know, it must suck to be in your, your business. And I was like, you know, of course I was just starting out. So I don't really know nothing. And I'm like, why is that? He's like, cause your customers are always like changing. You know what I mean? Like, you know, they retire, they, this, and, and now that I got some years under my belt, I can definitely understand what he says because I got companies I don't work for anymore because of the ownership changed. Um, and so that's tough. You know what I mean? Cause you got this relationship, you're doing good. You're, you're like busy. And all it says is it takes one or two companies to say, you know, they're changing ownership. They're going up, belly up and you're kind of like doing this like crap. Now I need some more work. You know, I got, I got, I, I hired three more guys, you know? So you're, you're, it's always a struggle. It's really, it's challenging. Uh, for a while. Yeah. Let's see if I miss something, forgive me guys. Like I said, I'm not, uh, it, it irritates me. I can't turn the phone. So, like, I'm looking. It looks funny to me. It's cost, yeah. As long as I, it's separate from the company, yeah. 
<laughs> Dump it here and move to Texas, huh? Uh, yeah, I appreciate appreciate that. Level up garage door. That's cool. I appreciate that. No, it's 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 nuts. You know, you just got to stay a steady course. You know, um, for me, always it was loyal customers. I can't. I just. I I feel like a lot of people never valued that. They. You know, just between like certain people, sometimes secretaries, workers, whatever, you know, like they just never quite understood where I'm like, I'm telling you, that loyal customer means more. You know, I still think about the guy down the road I was doing a roll up door for it, and I underbid it. I think I had the secretary out there and I had another. No, it was just me and her. Maybe we were short staffed and we we're trying to put out this door. We'll come to find out when you do roll up doors like for storage units. Uh, if they're, what is it? It's eight foot. I think it's eight foot tall. You can't like lift those by yourself. Like you need a third person in the middle because you'll just buckle the track. I've done nine by sevens all day long with two guys. You know, you put the track on, you tip them up, zing, zing, zing. And away you go. Couldn't do it. And I was struggling, man. And it was snowing and blowing the wind. It was just one of those days. I was just like, oh my gosh, you know, like I had to bring my poor secretary out on this and this crappy weather. And I remember, um, the guy pulled me aside and he told me, he says, Hey, he goes, you know, I think you underbid this. I've never heard this in my life. Never. And I'm like, you know, I'm already like my tail's tucked between my legs. I said, yeah, I said, I did. And he goes, well, he goes, I want to make it right with you. I mean, right there, right. An honorable man, an honorable man. He goes, I'm going to give you, you know, whatever, 20 or $50 more per door. Would that be fair? And I'm like, dude, I'm losing my shirt. I'm like, anything would be helpful right now. And so for him to do that, I literally had a, you know, I had to call a buddy and he came out and he helped us, made a world difference. But man, just for somebody to come out there and pay you more money without like, that was the contract. That's what you agreed to. I mean, I, I worshiped that man. I was like, dude, whatever you want. You know what I mean? And then he was just always a good customer and everybody complained about him because we did give him a little bit of a discount but he was three minutes down the road. And I'm like, does like nobody understand? Like it's three minutes down the road. Like that takes out all the liability, you know, 15, 20 minute, 30 minute, two hour drive of somebody on the road that you're paying. That's not producing in a sense, more liability, hit somebody, kill somebody, kill themselves, hit a deer, whatever the case. I just, you know, I was like, it's right down the road. Like he can get $10 off his service call or $20 because he would grave sometimes. Well, he's easy, raised it up $10. But just for that one thing, it was like, it made me, I can work with this guy. You know what I mean? I appreciate it. I really did. It was really cool. I'm so pro, yeah, pro lift. Let's see here. Um, da, 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 I'm out to dump in me. Yeah, turn into Arizona. Love up. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, gives a tip. You know what's weird? It's like, I swear, I think I give off the vibes to customers because they never, I've I gotten a few, but. I don't know if it's like my one guy. I got one guy that works for me. That dude gets all these tips. He's like, he comes back, he's like, oh, tip, $20 tip. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, I don't, you know, like, and I don't know if it's just because I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like in and out. A lot of things too. Here's a little advice. I would literally, um, I would, I would actually make sure I told the guys too. I'd say, Hey, look, don't tell the customer that we're here. Don't, you know, tell them I'm the, you know, the boss or the owner or anything like that, because I just, I, it always made it awkward. It seemed like, you know, I'd only use that authority if I absolutely had to a couple of times I did, but you know, I had one guy one time, he's just like, Oh, he's right there. And of course then it's like, well, can I get a discount? And I'm like, not really. You already agreed to the price. Like, ah, let's see here. I got another one actually. So I figured since I'm already like 44, let's just keep rolling. I'm just going to go with it. Um, I think it's orphan, orphan, orphan. I mean, I'm so, I'm so, I apologize. I butcher names. I can barely remember my own kids' names. Uh, new to the business owner, neighborhood, garage doors, Rockville, Maryland. First of all, really, uh, was it really like YouTube videos? Appreciate that. Hoorah. Uh, find them interesting for that reason. Kind of because I find hard residential clients. Oh, find it so hard to have residential clients. I have invested money on advertising. Here you go, you guys, but don't know any good method. Um, residential clients, man, 
warranty companies, subcontract to Home Depot. Thank you. So, man, it sounds like you guys are having a real hard time with the residential. And I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's just your competition so saturated out there. Um, so I'm trying to think, like, it did It did bring up my, my brain here a little bit with the whole idea between, like, Home Depot and stuff. Oh, man, I tell you, I don't know if I would ever pull that. that. I had a guy that was kind of like, um, he was my competition slash friend. And I, so, you know, let me give you a little background about when I used to work for Lowe's. Lowe's was a different animal. Lowe's was actually not that bad to work for because when I was first starting out, it was like having that mother that you needed, right? It was like having that secretary that you needed. It was like having a neighbor calling you saying, there's somebody at your house. Like, what do we do? Want me to call the cops? And so, and the reason I say that is because there was three people in every store, like right here. I used to have three people in this store right here constantly, right? They'd work a half a shift or whatever it was. And you could almost get to know them by name. And they had such a good procedure. Now, mind you, I used to, at that time, I was working with Wayne Dalton. Wayne Dalton provided a, a fantastic product. And my, my, um, the guy, the guy that was running it used to run a garage door business. So he understood the garage doors. That's what made it amazing. Because like your weather seal, right? It was his idea to put it in a plastic bag, right? And it was labeled. So it would come and it was clean, right? It was clean. No fingerprints. You know, it was clean. Everything was labeled. Everything was color coded. I mean, it was like child's play. It was like, like, give me a crane. I'm going to do a color book. You know, it was, just, it was just amazing. And so these guys would constantly call you which was a good call because us, us contractors, even myself, got lazy. I was doing my own customers. I'd forget. They'd send the paperwork. Everything was done by fax. And I remember they'd call and say, hey, because they wanted like within, I think it was 24 hours. You were supposed to contact customer. You're supposed to set up a detail, go and, you know, measure up the door, make sure things are going to fit. And then you had like five business days or something like that after you received the product that they wanted you to install it. So they were constantly nagging on you. And they were actually humans that lived in this area, which is great because let's say there's a hurricane, let's say there's power outages, let's say there's a tornado. They understand, right? And they're working for you, right? They're going, hey, we've had a little problem over here, you know, so I you're, I can give the guy, you know, your installer might not be out this week. Uh, we had a lot of trees fall, you know, whatever. When I worked for, I did some stuff for Home Depot for a little bit and Home Depot was totally different. So for instance, Lowe's, Lowe's was like a set, like, this is what you're going to get paid unless you did custom, like custom work and you would specify that and get extra pay out of them. Home Depot was like, you can charge what you want, but we're going to chat tack on like 60%. It was just weird. So I remember the one time I went up to a lady way up North. I had to charge her a lot because I had like $400 more in fuel. I just remember this lady was so excited. She was like, Oh my gosh. She's like, I just can't wait for my new garage door. And I'm just like, you, you haven't, I know how the system works. You haven't even got a price yet. And I'm thinking she ain't gonna like when I tack on another $700 for me to come up here. So sure enough, I tacked on the money. Poof, not a problem. But she had that credit card. See, that credit card is what's amazing sometimes. So we did it for a while too when I had another guy kind of running the place a little bit. He was really good at it. He, he would promote, um, the credit cards, um, green, I don't know, or it was green leaf or something like that. So we used, and people would move on that, you know, since they could put it on a credit card and they did like a, you know, six months, same as cash, you know, um, they did different things, right? Now we are not real heavy and residential, so we don't really push that, right? We kind of got our loyal customers now, either customers come to us, they can use a credit card of their own. It just saves on the back end of the paperwork. So anyways, Home Depot, just remember, they put a percentage on it. But I remember what the problem was when I was dealing with Home Depot was I remember when I, um, I had one call me out, right? I was charging another $150 on top of the job. 
And I remember the guy calling me. This guy's like wherever. He's from another state, let's just say. And he's like, you know, that's not normal protocol. We normally don't pay that much. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, here's the thing. The jam needs to all be like ripped out, new wood put up. I mean, it, it's like a disaster. Plus the place is a war zone. I mean, there's just stuff. No matter if we tell them to clean it, they're not going to clean it. We're going to have to move stuff. And he goes, well, that's just, you know. And I said, okay. I said, here, here's the thing. I said, I said, let's just, let's just stop here. I said, have you, you, I said, have you ever installed a garage door? And he goes, well, uh, you know, I can tell he's a young kid. He goes, well, no. And I said, okay. I said, then I really don't understand why we're having this conversation. I said, because I said, you're, you don't see the situation I'm running into. I said, I got to tear out all this, put all this new wood in. I said, the wood alone is like, you know, 50, $60. I said, plus I got to buy package of nails, all, you know, like there's a lot that's got to be done here. So here's how this is going to kind of work. Either kind of take it or leave it. Find another installer. I know you guys don't have a, a Rolodex of installers. Heck, when I started with Lowe's, I remember that it was like when I went to their seminar, which was really pretty good. Hey, look at that. We got about 10 people on here. That's awesome. If you don't mind, hit that thumbs up. It just kind of helps Elgro, the algorithm a little bit. And besides, I try to do giveaways. I'm going to give you guys some giveaways. Got to put some stuff in your guys' pocket. You guys scratch my back, I scratch your back. So anyways, so I, uh, when I went to the seminar, all right, I got two. So I go to the seminar, <laughs> I just, remember, and, uh, there's this really like clean cut dude. He was, he was a good dude. He was smart and I respect him. I think his name was Sean and we're sitting there, right? You know, and we're, I had to go an hour and a half or something like that away to the seminar to, to sign up. Right. And I was all excited, right? Oh my God, we're going to be a part of Wells. Oh, my life is going to change. You know, it's going to be a miracle. We're going to be millionaires. And, uh, I remember we're in there, right? And this guy leans over and he's like, you know why you're here? I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm just here for a seminar. I'm hoping I get in. I hope they select me. And he goes, uh, he goes, well, in your area, he goes, they got, they got two roofers doing garage doors. So they really need you. And I'm like, what? They got roofers? Roofers? Roofers doing garage doors? What the? Ah, you know, and uh, it was just, it was funny. So I was like a shoe in right? The guy's like, oh yeah, you know, we're, we'll probably get you, you know, get you in that area, blah, blah, blah. But you know, one thing I always remember I took away from that, which I think is very important for you guys, is no matter what's going on, right? When you're, when you're doing your sales or you're meeting the customer or you're, you're a sole proprietor, all these things. The first 10 minutes and the last 10 minutes with the customer are the most important. And I always remember that. And I always took away that when you show up, you're smiling, you're nice, you're friendly, you're courteous, right? Typically they go inside, you know, and that's when you <laughs> start banging stuff and you just do your own thing, right? But when they come back out, you take 10 minutes, you go over everything, you explain everything. You Like a biggest thing for me always was the stinking photo eyes. The photo eyes or the death sentence. So I would explain to them, you know, I'm like, if the light ever blinks, it's only because of the photo eye. And the photo eye is probably because your garbage can's sitting right next to it. So please don't call me for your stinking photo eyes. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, let's see what you guys got here. Well, I guess I tip. Oh, it's a tip. What's up? Let's see what you got here. Question. Well, working on my lead. Sorry to buying the leads from angie Ooh, man you know you ever watch my angie video people really bash that thing i know they are not good <laughs> okay 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 as long as you know they're not good but what do you think is a good lead budget for the midwest oh man that's a tough one mm. oh man <sighs> budget 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 boy that is not my you know, I think you can do like they kind of say, like for every sale, you know, you got to, you know, take 10%, 20%. Um, I'm more of a, I like to see it, right? I can't stand this stuff like with, you know, Angie's List and um, what's the other one? Home Advisor. You know, it, it just, it irritates the heck out of me that you got to spend this money. So I had another one I was going to start up with, right? And it's because I started another business I was doing, you know, and I thought, and I'm so glad I didn't because it's funny how they still send me the leads, right? They still send me the leads 
because they're trying to rope me in. And every time it always says, you know, would you like to like to apply for this lead? They don't give you the last name, right? They kind of tell you the area, not the whole address, but what city it's in. And I'm always like, what the hell? Like, why would, I don't even want that. Like, it's not even in my area. Like, it's like so far out of my area. Like, I'm like, that cost me so much time and fuel. And that's a lot of guys just don't, I mean, your time, man, if you can stay local, that's what I'm saying. Like, and I think people resonate with that too. That's why I'm saying like the signs, either put them in the yards when you're doing garage doors, you know, and then also lots of customers will say, Hey, cause some people don't care. Some people want to promote you. You did a good job. Say, Hey, can I, can I leave my sign here? Or can I come back in two weeks and get it? Or can you, you can just throw it away. Or, you know, Hey, if I leave a sign here, how about I take, you know, 10%, whatever it is. I don't care what it is. Just give them 10 bucks. Say, Hey, I give you 20 bucks, leave it up for two weeks. Would you do that for me? Sure. Not a problem. Or give me a phone call when you're done with it. I'll come pick it up when I'm in the area, whatever you want to do. But I just think it's, it keeps it, it's a hundred percent local, right? You know, the sign wasn't put there by an alien. Well, let's hope not, but it's there. It's, you see the sign, you get excited about the sign, hopefully, and you want to, you want to do business with them, right? And you got to remember too, you're, 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 you're branding it in a sense, but you also still have to always remember that, like I said, about that, that, that fire extinguisher, you're not important until you're needed. So until that spring breaks or they need that garage door and now they're going to pursue you and look for you, right? They don't, the, the stuff is not like shopping for a car or shopping for a new kitchen, right? Let me, I'll give you an example here for a second. Don't let me forget about the auto body eye. If I forget, don't let me forget. I just want to make sure I read. Hey, another question working. Yes. So, but anyways, with that Angie one, use caution. Just use caution. Do what you can. But my experience is always that, you know, as soon as you got the lead, holy crap, I literally had to start driving there because otherwise it was like three more guys were on their way and I'd get there and I'd be like, what the, why, why are they there? Like, how did this even happen? What am I doing wrong? Is my computer slow? Is my internet not fast enough? I mean, we would like call the customer and they'd be like, oh, we, I already had somebody else. Some people didn't care. And I hated that. You know what I mean? It's like, cause these customers don't care. And, and it's not, not all of them, but sometimes they're, they're old or they're, they're senior citizens and they just don't understand. Right. They just, you know, they panic and they call somebody and it's like, you show up and there's another guy there and it's like, what the, you know? All right. Uh, 1k, holy crap, crap, 1k paid and Oh man. 1K paid in advance, 65 average per lead in one week. Uh, six actual estimates producing. Mm. Man, this is hard though. If they don't bite, guys don't forget, ask. Oh yeah, yeah, there you go. I like that. God for his favor. That's true, that's true. That is very true. Okay, so 400 per month for Angie leads. Mm. Well, that's good. That's what I mean. I mean, it, it's just, everybody's different, right? For me, you know, you're paying the $400 and if you're making money, hey, roll with it. You know, it's just, it got to be like, for me, it was like, we were like an ambulance chaser. You know what I mean? It was just like, oh my gosh, you'd come in and the secretary would let me know. And I was like, and I'd get there and I'd be like, yeah, I can be there like in five minutes. And they're like, well, you know, I had, well, how much, you know, it's like, how much? It's like, man, I'm like right around the corner. It's like, come on. And he, you know, it just, I don't know, to me, it was just too much running around. All right. So anyways, let me tell you about this, uh, auto body guy. I've come across two of them in my life. Um, and I consider them friends. They're, they're good people. I was at this one guys, the one time, and it's just, it just puts things in like perspective a little bit, but he, he said one time I said, Hey, I said, is your, is your son going to take over this, you know, auto body shop? And he said, no, he said, he's too smart for that. And I'm like, too smart for that. Oh. And uh, he goes, the thing is, he says, our industry has changed. And I'm like, do tell. So he was explaining, and I, I, I just like this because I want to tell you the story because I think it's something that it resonated with me where I thought there's something to this. But I remember when he told me this, he said, look, he goes, when people get in car accidents, they're ticked. He used other words. He says, now that they're out of a car, they're upset. Now they got to come see me and I got to give them a price for their insurance company or whatever. They're upset. He says, then I start working on the car. I find out there's more problems with the car than what I originally estimated or whatever. 
So I have to call the adjuster. I have to call the customer. They're upset more because it's going to cost more money. And I'm thinking, okay. And he goes, and then when they come see me and something isn't maybe quite right, or they have to um, pay the bill, they're upset. And I thought, I think this guy's onto something. He goes, but he goes, a female, possibly a male too, they can go spend 10, 20, 50, 100, $200,000 on a kitchen to remodel their kitchen and in their house. And they're just ecstatic. You know what I mean? Because it was planned. And I thought, I see where you're going with this. I like this. He also told me that the adjusters have changed. He used to go to lunch with them. He used to know them all by name. He could call them up, say, hey, Johnny, we got a problem. You know, this customer needs a taillight still. That's going to be another $200. And they'd say, all right, we'll approve it. Just take care of it. He says, not that way anymore. He said, it's all done. You know, I got I to gotta deal, you know, we're up here in Michigan. He goes, I got to deal with somebody in Florida. And he says, they don't know the customer. They don't, they don't see the customer eye to eye. And that really resonated with me with like how things change and how you got to be kind of looking for the future. And I just, I didn't know this stuff. I didn't know about like the, the, you know, you do this work, right? The work is easy. The work is simple. If you're a one man band, I mean, this is like gravy work. It's not hard. It's when you kind of got to get that friend involved or you got to get a family member that maybe got five or 10 or 15 years before they expire, let's just say, or they wear out or they're too old to be doing the stuff, you know, and now you got that burden where you're like, I'm building this customer base and I, now I got to keep doing this. And oh my gosh. And then, you know, my buddy one time told me how, you know, he ran a business that he, st he still does different business. We always go back and forth. And he was telling me how he goes, you know, it's easy for the wives to tell you, well, just fire them. And he says, but you don't understand, honey, if I fire them, that is more workload that I have to take on, you know? And so you, you think seeing me at six, seven, eight o'clock at night is bad enough. And I'm not at the kid's game. Wait till, you know, I'm not home till nine, 10 or midnight. And by the time it's midnight, I'm going to the bar till two o'clock in the morning because <laughs> I'm so burned out. Oh man. Uh, month comes between. All right, let's see what says. Some kind of difference model in your area. I pay per lead. Yeah, sometimes can receive 10 to 15 per month. Not bad. To my area. Yeah, I mean, I think all these Angeles, I mean, I, I don't doubt these people like in Chicago and stuff like that or LA. I mean, it's a totally different animal. I have no doubt about that. It's just for up here, we're so rural, I think, and it was just, it was too far away. You know, you, you got some salesperson that would, that promised you the world. And then it was like, they just, you, you couldn't, you couldn't find them again. And the problem is they get you locked in with their credit card. That was the worst part because they want you to what, like you have to do a written contract. So here's a, t here's a tip. Here's a tip between me and you, between me and you. This is what I would do. This is what I would do. If you're going to sign up, let's say with, uh, Angie's. It's not Angie's list anymore. That's Angie. Cause they probably already had to bankrupt the company. Right. So they just changed the name. I don't know for sure, but, <clears throat> um, do it with a different credit card that you can just basically turn it off and throw it away. That's the trick. That's the trick right there. That's the secret sauce because, and there is a way I, I know there's a guy I've, I've watched and he says, there's actually a system that you can do that. You can actually link different bank accounts or uh, different credit cards and you can click them off. I don't know what it's called right off the top of my head. Um, I do think if you get over so many, you got to pay a little fee and stuff like that. So it might not work. But if you can just get a credit card that you know is like one of the wives or you, yourself and you just, you sign it up for a bank, you got some money in there, you get sick of these people, just turn it off. Just turn it off and let them run their whatever they want to run and just move on. Uh Model, let's see here. Sometimes we see, yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit slow. Well, I'm glad you said that. Love, love, garage doors. Um, wow. We're, we're not quite seeing it. It's there. It's there because I know with some of our builders, they're getting stuff quoted. Um, 
but they're not moving forward on it. And that's the customers, right? The customers aren't pulling the plug on it to say, let's, they're getting prices. But the one thing that took me, um, so there, there was a garage door guy around here that would, we would always, uh, we're, we're friends and um, he's older. And he'd always, when he called me, he goes, ah, oh, you know, you know how the system is, right? And I never quite understood it, but I get it now. I'm still not an expert by any means. I don't feel like, but I understand there's seasonalities to this business. And for instance, right, we're going to start hitting the end of the, the year here. We start ramping up, right? Because everybody's feeling the same way. We're, we're so emotion based. So everybody starts thinking the same thing. Oh my gosh, I got to get this project done. I got to get this done. Oh my gosh, I got to get the roof done. I want to get that garage door fixed. I want to be able to you know, put my plow truck in there, the skidster, whatever it is. And they start doing the same thing. And so in a lot of these, a lot of our jobs for us anyways, because we're heavily or more commercial base, you get these guys that these projects, they're, they're trying to get these buildings built. They know the weather's going to start changing. So we get this huge, like, we're just slammed, which is, it's, it's like a horrible feeling, right? You get slammed and then you get the holidays, right? And then everybody's like employees and everybody's like, yay, holiday. What days are we taking off? How many days are we getting off? Are we taking that day off and not taking this day off? Oh, well, we are, yay. Well, then you start getting sickness. People start getting sick and you start like, it's a real bear because you're swamped and these guys want these jobs done. They want them done now. And so it's really tough, but you start learning the season, you know, then it's like when you get to the beginning of the year, it's like, poof, it's like, hello. Oh, hello. Well, you got to think about it logically. Everybody spent all their money for Christmas. Everybody spent all their money for booze or whatever for the new year's, right? They're broke. So now it's, you know, nobody's building, nobody wants to build stuff. Nobody's building the, the barns or the shacks or the new garages. Nobody, it's all slows down, you know? And so there is a seasonality of this stuff. And like right now, I mean, you got to remember, we're going into, they, they call it the lame duck, right? The lame duck, which is right now, I mean, we're talking the big people, right? Because the big people control this stuff. It all trickles down to us, right? We're like the little peasants. And right now, next year is what? Election year, isn't it? It's election year next year. So you got that lame duck, which we don't know if it's going to be Republican. We don't know if it's going to be Democrat. We don't, we don't know. So a lot of these big corporations, they're sitting back right now, right? And then whatever it is, it'll normally be like, oh, they're going to be the newest thing since sliced bread. And then we'll, we'll rally for a little bit. It's like the stock market, right? Every day is different. It's like, oh, we're down 300 points. Next day, oh, we're up 400 points. It's just, it's just nuts. It's just nuts. So, but yeah, we're, we're, it's there. We're just not slow yet because we have so much still in the pipeline, but I do not doubt. But the thing is too, for us, which helped us a lot is we, you know, we got so many years into our area that, you know, so many people know us and we're into so many commercial and it's like, there's a certain point. Yeah. We might have to adjust our prices or we might have to be a little more flexible on what we're taking. Um, but we're always steadily like the phone's always ringing. You know what I mean? And that's hard. It's hard. It takes years. And that's why they, what do they say? What, like the first, you know, five years, businesses don't make it. And I, I get it. It took me more than that. It was like, I was still like six or eight years into the business. I was like, God dang. I was like, I'm over five years. And I'm like, I feel like I'm still like, until I hit about that eight, you know, six to eight years. Then I started going, Whoa, I can, I don't have to boogie so much. I don't have to sit with these salesmen and advertise and all this stuff. So that's a good feeling. It really is. Uh, tax season. Yep. You got that right. You got that right. Tax season. Um, with my other businesses, I see the same thing. You know, it's like beginning of the year, you know, you hit tax season and it's like people, it's amazing how this system works. And it, it's, it's so sad that like right now, I would personally say that people need a stimulus now more than they did before, but we know how it goes. They probably did it so they could push another agenda of some sort where they're like, Oh, but we're doing this, but we're going to give you the, a carrot. You know what I mean? And I look at it now and I go, I think there's people, more people hurting now. I'm seeing a lot more people on the corners, you know, panhandlers. I'm seeing, uh, you know, there's a car literally, I'd switch the camera around if I knew how, you know, let's take a look here. Let's see if this works. There's a, there's a car right there. I guarantee you there's like, it's like a pillow or something fell out the door. 
and there's something in front. It's been sitting there the whole time. This place is known for having people sleep in the parking lot. I mean, Lowe's, when I drove by here, uh, this was a couple months ago with my kid, the cops, I've seen the car sitting there. You know, and the worst part is, it's like they're asking for it, right? Because there was garbage, a lot of garbage outside the vehicle, like just thrown out the window. And I'm like, you're asking to get yourself booted. And I remember, um, sure enough, drove by the one day, I was getting supplies or something, you know, and uh, there's two cops arresting. It looked like a, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. And I'm like, bummer, man, that's a bummer. But they didn't also look that, like they probably do some kind of weird, wacky stuff, you know? Uh, let see, yes. A residential in pipeline as well many ducks in different baskets that's good yeah i mean you know like for us it's not the best thing you know but like for us we we can diversify pretty quickly um like we can kind of switch over into fencing which like we look at a job and we're like we're doing a gate and they're like well can you put you know 100 or 200 feet of fencing it's like yeah we can we can do that um it all depends uh it, it's it's good for slow times but it can be bad for when you're busy because it's just hard to diversify into all those things. It's better to stay because then the, you know, the vehicles are all um, dialed in. You know, they all got springs on them. They all got your impacts. They got, you know, like when you do fencing, it's a different animal. You know, you do you do gate operation that. It's similar, but it's it's a lot different. So it's it's hard to be, especially with workers. If it's you and, and you you're taking care of your own fire truck is the way I like to say, or your own service vehicle. It's not so bad because you know, hundred percent most time employees, they don't really, you know, they use things. They don't come back. They don't care. They got to make three trips back to the shop and it's costing time and, and money and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's, it's hard. It really is when it comes to that stuff. But so, yeah, difficult. Yeah. It's, yeah, you got to stick with what, and, and it's hard because um, I've had a lot of uh, pullback um, or uh, blow by, I guess you call it. I don't know what you call it, but you know, like with, um, with workers, it's hard when you, like when I did service stores, I absolutely hate service stores. I don't recommend service stores. Service stores are like the worst because <laughs> the way I always look at it was service stores, man doors, you know, literally the doors that you go through, like at your house. It's a hundred percent human interaction. A garage door, you can kind of get away with it, right? Garage door spring didn't balance out so well. It's a little hot. It's a little heavy. Mm, you know, eh, you know, hook the garage door opener up, hit the button. Eh, no biggie. But the the uh, I remember when I did one. I did one with my uncle, and we installed. You know, I thought I did mm, did a beautiful job. It was the one that had like two lights on the side. And I remember the guy, it, it drug a little bit, right? And the guy was like, there's, I can see light under it. And I'm like, well, if I make it like any tighter, it's going to be really hard to shut. And he was like, oh, I don't care. He's like, I want it to seal. He's like, I don't want, you know, I don't want my energy bills going up. And I'm like, okay, not a problem, man. So I remember I, I made it really tight and I was worried it was so tight. It was going to like literally rip the bottom seal off. And that's what I mean. It's just, it's human interaction. You know what I mean? That human interaction really sucks. So like fencing, right? It's like they don't they don't interact with it. Um, it's not dealing with electricity, circuit boards. It's it's like it can have its variables, but it's just it's not as bad. You put some concrete in a hole. It's you know they're not evaluating that where a garage door, right? The wife pulls up. If there's a scratch, there's a dent in it. They they're looking at it all the time, right? The fences in the backyard. They you know. There's things that can be wrong, but just it's not as bad. Sometimes you got to be looking at that whole. It's so hard to look at the interactions of things. It really is. Uh, let's see what I got here. Uh, find employees, man. <laughs> as soon as I see this, uh, even uh, finding employees, Ben. Oh, it's not good. <laughs> I've been retired for a long time, but once garage door, uh, I worked on garage doors to fix my own. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> they want to hire me. <laughs> keep good workers. Yeah, yeah. Can't keep good workers. Oh, I see. He's got going here. Yeah, man. It's it's so tough out here. It really is. I don't think. I got a lot of people in my life that just they don't understand. You know what I mean? And, and so that's why I. 
this is such a blessing. It's a huge thing to be able to just talk to you guys out there where I get these comments, I get these emails, and I literally just, I don't feel like I'm, because I, I just, otherwise it's like, I can talk to family members and stuff like that. And it's like, people just typically don't get it because they just don't have to deal with the employees. You know what I mean? And, and, and like I said, looking back, when I started, and that, that was me not looking forward, right? That was the problem. I was kind of like this. You, you don't realize how difficult the business can be. Now, can it be good? Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it can be anything. It's, it's like a relationship. Some are good. Some are bad. Some have pros. Some have cons. But, man, the employees. And, and the problem is... The biggest problem that we're running into, all of us, all of us, is is what the government's doing. You know what I mean? They're not helping the situation. All these handouts, all this brainwashing, all these things are being told, all this, you know, uh, fairy dust and all these rainbows. We don't need this in our life. If that's what you are, congratulations. S just do what you got to do. But we don't need to make everything such a question. You know what I mean? And if you're not this, you're weird. And it's it just, it's just stupid. Uh, yeah, it's like I said, it's been, Ooh, was this a, installing commercial for Rainer garage doors for about four years? I've been thinking about starting my own. Any sessions where to get doors for customers. So doors from, so I've said before, you know, over in our area here, we, we, we I've been so lucky. We've had such a great, um, it's a small, and this is like one of those things you got to think about. So it's a small mom and pop operation. I don't really want to say the name. I don't know. I just, I just, but they deal with, uh, was it mid American doors and they get their own springs. I don't know where they get all their stuff from, but they're a big lift master. Right. And, um, I think they deal with Lanier too, but they only deal with commercial guys, um, or just garage doors. They just kind of like wholesale, whatever. And they've been such a huge, like if you can find, so now here's, if you got an AMAR dealer, you might, it seems like a lot of any of the AMARs, if it's an AMAR, like they distribute doors, they'll sell to you. Um, I guess now I think of it, Wayne Dalton, it's, it's farther away from us. They would sell to local guys. They had springs in stock and they had garage doors um, and they carried LiftMaster for a while and then they switched over to Genie. So you, you just got to, if you're looking for doors um, and there's different ways you can do it. I mean, the one thing that's always been a challenge for me was when I first started out was like Menards. We got a Menards, which is, if you don't have a Menards, they're like a Lowe's or Home Depot. And people would come in, they go, well, I can go to Menards and I can get the door $100 cheaper than what you're going to sell it for me. Now, this is something I probably should put this out there because I didn't know this. I'm going to get, I'm going to get hung, I think. So if, if I don't see you guys again, it's been fun. Anyways. So... Let's say with uh, WD, which stands for, you know what I just said a little bit ago. So WD, right? I, I found out this the hard way. And like I said, I was young. I was just starting out. I didn't know nothing. So anyways, <laughs> oh man, I don't even like saying this. Um, but uh, so I was buying doors from them, buying doors, buying doors. They were my first one I bought doors from. And... So I remember I thought, hey, we're good. You know, we've built a relationship. I was with him for years. I remember when I met the guy. He was a really cool dude. And I remember I met him in a mall. And I was so happy. He gave me the paperwork to fill out for the credit app or whatever. And uh, boom, well, that's how we started, right? In a mall, shook hands. I met the guy halfway because he was coming from a long ways. I was coming from another way. I met him. I was so thankful. He was a really good dude. He really was. He, he did a lot for me in the business. And um, so anyways, um, as time went on, um, this other company came around and they were local-ish. And I could get the doors like almost $200, like a 16 by 7 garage door. I could get it for like $200 cheaper. So what I was doing, wasn't very nice, but I was doing it, is I was calling WD and I was saying, hey, I was like, give me a price on a garage door. Right. And so they give me a price. And I remember uh, the price they would give me 
which would be on the phone. So even if the customer heard I had on a speaker, right? I was like, oh, okay, it's like 650, 650. Okay, got it, yeah, yeah. So I'd be like, it's $650 for the door. And then you gotta add our labor, which is like 200 bucks, you know? And they're like, oh, okay, yeah, you know? So I'd use their price. And then if I got approved, right, the customer say, okay, go ahead and do it. I would contact, it was Amar, and I would, I would go with their garage door because it was 200 bucks cheaper. So that's $200 in my pocket. Well, this was going on for a while. And that guy that I met, he had to drive truck one day because they were down an employee. That was a long time ago. They were still having problems then too. But um, he comes, all right? And he's like, hey, he goes, you know, your, your sales are down. And I said, yeah. And I said, well, I said, here's the thing. I said, I'm losing jobs because I was. I was going to certain customers and they were like, I got this other guy that's going to do it. And he's like $250 cheaper than you. And I'm like, and I'd be like, can you show me the estimate? Because now I want knowledge, right? I'm like, they'd show it to me and I'm like, I can't even, like, I'll make 50 bucks on the job. I can't do that. Hey, I appreciate the thumbs up. I really do, guys. And um, so I'm like, man, I'm just losing my butt. So I ended up uh, telling them that. I said, you know, I said, well, here's the thing. I said, your doors are like 200 bucks cheaper than this other company. Oh, oh, hmm. So he ended up uh, literally, like, within hours, there's different classes in these places that you might not be aware of. There's A, B, and C. Depending on what tier you're on, you might be on the highest one. I was paying the highest one. I didn't know that until I found out later on. So I was on the highest tier. So they knocked me down to C, which I think is the lowest. And so my prices were phenomenal. I mean, it changed just like that overnight. So it was something I should have known. I just want to let you guys know that sometimes you got a price shop. But what I was going at was when Menards... Nards buys some so much buy buys so much volume of garage doors. I can't compete with that. So of course they're hundred dollars cheaper, but they were also their product was inferior. It wasn't as good as product what I was going to install. And I tried to explain that to the customer, and I'd say, you know, here's the thing too: you're going to buy this door, and I would say, I'm going to install it. I'm not going to warranty it. As soon as my truck leaves your driveway, it's out of warranty. I'm not warrantying it. So now think of it: when you got to call me to come back because something goes wrong with this product that I don't know. I said it's 65 or it's 85, whatever it was then, you know what I mean, for me to come back. And then if I got to come back again, it's another service call. So I just want you to be aware. Some people didn't care. They just, those are probably the customers you don't want anyways. They're nickel and diamond, you know, you know what I mean? I'm looking for the ones that are like, hey, this guy's going to show up. He's going to take care of me. If I have a problem, he'll be there. He'll handle it. I mean, that's, that's what you want, right? You want the customers that got the money, understand the business, understand a man's handshake. You know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff. You can look them in the eye. Be honest with them. So let's see what you got here. Thinking and starting my own. But yeah, with the garage door. So, anyways, if I just, there's so many places nowadays. And with WD, they were like a type that you couldn't even like, if you meet the criteria, like you had a location, uh, I think your credit was good. Mm, I don't think you had to have any capital, but like they would, they would sign you up. So, I mean, it's really not that bad to find. I mean, a lot of guys, I think, panic. I know I did. You know, it, it's more or less just get out there and what, just get one job. Get one job and handle it and do a damn good job. Just that's all you got to do. Just do a good job. Treat the customer right, right? And you got to remember, right, there's going to be some backlash because something's going to go wrong at some point. And you're going to have to go back. Are you a guy that's going to honor it? Are you a guy that's going to not show up when they call and say, hey, this door that you installed, something's squeaking out, it's not acting right because you're out trying to chase more money? Those are the things that just happen. 24 foot two steel gate so if you guys ever watch some of my garage doors level up here he's asking about a gate a sliding gate motor i'm a big lanier fan i'm a big lanier fanboy i really am it used to be osco osco was built right here in michigan hoorah and i think they did a phenomenal i think the engineer whoever was the owner was a small little company knew what we were up against and seeing the future in a sense. And the cabinet was what saved the day. If you're in somewhere that's like constantly sunny and nice, yeah, go with the master. You know what I mean? But for up here, we get some harsh winters. We get snow buildup. We get weird ice. We get snow that comes out of the ground. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's, it's just nuts. And when you got to go out there in a blizzard to look at it and you can swing that gate open, that door and have a little bit of blockage, you know, for the snow and the rain and the stuff pelting you and you got a lid on it 
and you can actually work on it without being like, oh my gosh, like some of the lift masters, once you take off, it's like the circuit board. I remember the first one I worked on was like circuit board's pointing straight to the sky and I got to take off a clear cover and I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, we'll have to come back another day. But when you run a business, right? Another day, holy crap, I only had today. So today I could have done it and I could spend six hours with it. Tomorrow I only got two hours available or now I got no hours available because somebody called something else. So I like the Lanier, the HSLGs, anything in HSLG with the cabinets. The cabinets is what make it. Lanier does make some plastic ones. I think are junk. I actually have one at a old property. I used to, and I hated the darn thing because you had to take the bolts out and take the plastic cover. I hate the covers. So it's always the cabinets that makes it to me. I think LiveMaster's done some, but what always makes me mad with LiveMaster knives is they make you marry into their product. They're not like, like, oh, you can hook up other accessories that are just like anybody's. You normally got to stick with LiveMaster. Not always. It's just, I don't know. This is kind of me. That's just kind of how they work. Oh, Excel distribution is, I don't even know. I've never even heard of that one. Excel is the best. Hmm. Wayne Dalton to Rainer. I went from installing Wayne Dalton to Rainer, and <laughs> I don't want to go back. Yeah. That's me. Yeah, so it, Wayne Dalton, you know, they, they all, it's, it's, I think when we're dealing with this stuff, we're dealing with like, we're dealing with like Chevy, we're dealing with Ford, we're dealing with Toyotas, we're dealing with, dodge you know what i mean everybody's got their own preference right and it just all depends on what you're doing right some people don't need four by fours some people just need two-wheel drive and it just all depends on where you're at and what works for you you know what i mean i'm not a hater against like liftmaster people oh, you know, like well i just had problems at one point i'm not saying they haven't they, they sounds like one guy was commenting and he said they've gotten better he's had basically no issues that's awesome but like for us, we have a lot of power outages. We have a lot of brownouts sometimes. So we are having a little bit of problems. And Genie is not perfect by any means either. It's just kind of like they're the cleanest shirt in the dirty laundry basket. That's how I look at it. But with Wayne Dalton, like, so I did some Rainer doors. Um, I never was hardcore into Rainer. I thought Rainer was pretty good. I felt like they were trying to beef some stuff up, like the track and stuff. Like there were certain things you were like, this is pretty, but then it came to like their bearing plates, which they did like, oh, I think it was a like bolted on. And I thought that's kind of ingenious. I like that idea because you can unbolt it and then you could, um, you know, put new ones on. So I think there are some benefits to it. Um, but like, I think Rainer the one that does weird like sizes for garage. So like that messes with my employees. Like I can't have two and a quarter ID for springs. I just, we carry two inch. So that's where it kind of turned me off. Like they're, you know, and they gave you the, like Safeway was kind of the same way. Like they try to give you this whole, like, you know, well, you know, it makes the door balance out better. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. I, I don't doubt that. You know what I mean? But in 10 years and 20 years as a salesperson, are you still going to be here? Because <clears throat> the problem is, is that it's hard when you send a technician out there that you can entrust, because I've personally done it, that you measure up one spring, right? The other spring's fine or whatever, and you don't measure, you don't want to unwind that spring. And so that spring's actually a different ID. And you didn't realize you come back with two new springs. Now you dump the springs. You're like, oh crap. You know what I mean? Or you didn't have it on your truck or whatever. Things happen, man. So, fit, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. Bend all, yeah, so. Yeah, it's just, it's amazing out there, you know, and I just had somebody, I'm going to make a video. I should make a video about it. The guy that commented on the AMAR, I think it's one of my comments somewhere, that how he used to work um, at the AMAR, the factory, and he was saying all the things that I was like, oh my gosh, I think this is so true, that how they never changed their conveyors and stuff, and that's why the doors were always all banged up. And I was like, oh, I was like, thank you for telling me that, because for the longest time, and even a guy that did it longer than me that was working for me, was telling me, he goes, oh, they're always that way. And he said, they always are trying to tell you, give the customer a discount, try to sell it, give the customer a discount. And I'm like, man, you guys don't know my mama. My mama, when she went and picked out a car, it was like, if there was a scratch in the car, they'd be like, oh, we can fix that. We'll get that, we'll get that fixed for you, ma'am. And she's like, hell no. She's like, I want a new car. You know what I mean? I don't want a car that's been repainted. I don't want a car that's getting a scratch fixed. I want a brand new car. I mean, that's just how I grew up, man. And so 
showing a garage door and it's like you're out there slapping paint on it, right? Eh, okay, here's a touch up paint. You know, and it just, it just didn't work. So, all right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I really appreciate the thumbs up. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'll catch you on the next one. Got any questions? Like I said, I'll put the email in here later. Otherwise, my other videos have the email. If I forget, you can always email me with questions. I love it. I always like printing them off. Printing them off, reading them. Like I said, it sounds like you guys are having some issues with residential. If you have any more questions on stuff, business, openers, gates, fence, whatever it is. If you Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Like I said, we all have to learn. I'm learning. I still learn every day. I learn from you guys too. So I really appreciate it. So take care, guys. We'll see you on the next one and have a great Sunday.